Today, I'm starting a brand new series on this channel where I take a look back at films that were forgotten in time for one reason or another. It could be they were streaming movies, had little to no marketing, were really successful indie films, or just bad enough that everyone forgot them. I think there's a lot of benefits to looking at films that no one talks about, and this series is to help highlight films that I think should be talked about way more than they are, no matter if I think they're good or bad. You can gain something from any kind of film. Even the worst films like The Room can offer filmmakers so much insight on what not to do, the same way you can watch a Spielberg movie and learn a lot about what you should do. But rather than talk about the biggest films, I think by highlighting the films that have been forgotten the time can help those up and coming filmmakers learn a lot and gain more insight into the vast landscape that is film. So, for my first video in the series, I'm taking a look back at the critically acclaimed indie comedy Safety Not Guaranteed. Starring Aubrey Plaza, Jake Johnson, and Mark Duplass, this film was directed by future Jurassic World director Colin Trevorrow and tells the story of three writers at a magazine who are chasing a story about a guy who claims he can time travel after discovering his ad in the newspaper. If there's one thing that Colin Trevorrow is great at, it's making films with great premises. Whether you like his films or not, you can't deny the guy has some great ideas. Now, whether they're executed well or not is another story. For his first film, I think that this is easily the best work Trevorrow has done. Rather than be a big bombastic sci-fi comedy like Back to the Future, this film decides to be more of a rom-com rather than a sci-fi movie. Rather than focus on the time travel aspects and whether it's real or not, the film ultimately asks us questions about regrets, what were we once like compared to now, and have we fulfilled anything in our lives? These are surprisingly deep questions, and it's not often you see them asked in an easy to digest film such as this. This is a character driven film, and it's sold perfectly thanks to its stellar cast. Plaza and Duplass have great chemistry, and the way their relationship grows throughout the film feels natural and believable. Even by the end, when you have to hit certain dramatic beats, it never feels forced, and you feel for them and their situation. Jake Johnson's character also has an interesting plot as he tries to reconnect with a former lover and has to figure out does he want what he remembers or can he grow up and change. Again, this is the kind of stuff I love to see explored in films that aren't just A24 experimental type films. By setting this story and these plots in a rom-com type setting with relatively low stakes in the real world, you feel a lot more for these characters and become invested in their lives as the film plays out. Had this been something more akin to Back to the Future, I don't think it would have worked the way that it does here. As to how the film explores time travel and if it's real, I think there was some interesting stuff the film does that you don't often see in films revolving around time travel. I wouldn't say go in expecting a time travel movie. If you're looking for a new take on the concept and seeing how to do it at the indie level, then you're going to be a bit disappointed. Similar to the characters in the film, what starts out as the search for answers ends with the audience more concerned about the characters' lives and how they're going to be by the end of the film. Now, it's not to say the film is perfect. As is a continuing thing in Trevorrow's films, there's some plot threads that are left just dangling in the air and are never resolved by the end. Well, it's maybe an hour and 26 minutes, the plots laid out are not difficult ones to complete in this time frame. Why some are left unresolved, I have no idea and it really frustrated me because these were interesting plots that I wanted to see resolved. Had this film completed these arcs, this would have been a really great film. That's not to say this film is bad, far from it. It's just annoying to me that Trevorrow hasn't figured out how to finish all his plots in either a satisfying way or just finish them at all, even all the way to the last Jurassic World film. That being said, I can see why he was picked to direct Jurassic World. What made the first Jurassic Park work wasn't necessarily the thrills and effects, but the characters. Had the characters been writ poorly written or directed, it wouldn't be remembered today at all. So, to take a guy that made a critically acclaimed film with really well done character work, it was a no-brainer decision to make at the time. While I think Trevorrow's legacy as a filmmaker has been tainted by the Jurassic World series, there's no denying that the guy does have talent and can do some really great stuff. Safety Not Guaranteed is the kind of rom-com you don't really see nowadays, and when you do, it always tries to go much bigger than it should. But, by being much smaller and more character driven, Trevorrow and future writing partner Derek Connolly created a special film that honestly should not have been forgotten in time. If you can, seek this one out. I promise it's not quite what you'd expect.